So we're going to start looking at how moving lights work with um, queues and queuing. So uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, move to queue 11 and we'll take everything that's on. So I'm going to go, okay, here's a neat little programming trick. Watch the, the keystrokes here on the hardware here. I'm going to type 1, shift through, and on the screen now you'll see that it says through on. 1, through on 64, at 0, enter. So that is a very quick way to say, well, everything in that range that is on, do something with it. In this case, I've turned it off. All right. So I'm going to record that as Q12. You'll notice that when I hit record then, it's, it's worked out that I'm actually recording it to uh, the, uh, the correct queue list. It by default records to the queue list that you have selected in the main window. Now I could have actually recorded that to the other queue list by manipulating some selections as I was typing the command line, but to my way of thinking it's actually easier to actually look at what you're recording at and record into that location. Okay, anyway, back to what I was doing. Now, we've got some moving lights to record. So we have, uh, let's see, let's grab these two lights. Now, those two, 103 and 104, are our profile lights. Now, what I'm going to do, I've already turned them on. I'm going to point them somewhere useful. What I'm doing is I've got the two of them under control there. I'm just going to grab 103 by itself now and just sort of more or less put them in the same kind of location there. We'll go to the lens control and we'll adjust the iris which is now on the, um, the screen on that position. So uh, we'll pop the iris up to pretty much as large as it, uh, as small as the actual physical size will go and make a dot that we can see on the stage. There she is. All right. So, uh, I've done one, I want the same focus to copy to the other one, so very easily. There's a button here on the hardware that says copy, I'm going to hit copy. As soon as I do that on the screen that you'll see a dialog box that says, um, that talks all about copying. Now, it's by default put the light that I, that I had selected in both of these two fields. So, um, if you select the light that you want to copy from, hit copy and then just immediately type the destination so 103 copy 104 you can literally hit enter and it will copy the parameters from one to the other what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to tell it to copy everything except position alright so it's just going to copy everything except position because I want it to stay more or less where it is I've hit OK and you can see out into this out in the stage that light has instantly jumped into um, the uh, the same sort of focus that the uh, that the first one had or, and the position was left where it was. So I've got the two lights better overlapped onto one little spot right there on the front of the stage you can see on the screen. All right, let's record that as Q13. So record, enter, done. Very simple, and you can see here on the screen, Q13 has been recorded with a time of 3. Uh, now I'm going to grab these lights and just move them to the other side of the stage. So 103, I've just selected him there, and I'm, all I'm going to do is adjust the pan. Okay, Just using my rotary encoder, I'm just going to uh, dial the pan around. And on the stage, I don't know if you can see this. I might have to change my position. Oh, yes, you can. Look at that. You can see the dot. All I've done is adjust the pan until that dot's over the other side, all right? And just watching the, um, the screen, you can see um, the other one. When I um, uh, dial him around, okay, you can see that the pan um, numbers have changed on the screen there. And now I'm going to have to adjust the so on one of the two lights, have a look at the stage, you can see I'm kind of getting them more or less in the right place there now. So I'm just going to try and overlap them again. Okay, so that's probably about as close as we're going to get. 
Um, one of those two lights I just panned it, the other two I adjusted pan and tilt. So I'm going to record that as Q14, but this time I'm going to put a time in of 10 seconds. Um, oops, that easy. I don't want to record it as Q10. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, record Q14 time 10 enter. There we go. Look at that. So what we've got are two lights that start on the stage. If you have a look at the stage, um, they start in the position over here. All right. And then when I hit go, just keep watching the stage. Um, what they're going to do is they're going to go straight across the stage and go to the other side. And the director goes, oh, no, that's not what I want at all. I don't want those lights going out into the audience like that. I want them to go in a straight line between those two points. Now, any other consult, you will have to put in a bunch of point cues that link those two cues up with those uh, moving lights forced into a straight line. With this console, let's have a look at the um, screen. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, I've got these two lights here, 103 and 104. You may have noticed already this thing over here called polar movement. Now, if I change that to linear movement, there are only two options there. It's either polar or linear. What that means is that um, it's going to draw a straight line between uh, where it was and where it's going. Okay, now I've made a change. I need to update the queue. So I'm going to hit update. And it says, yes, update Delta Q14. That's exactly what I want it to do. Enter. All right. So this time we'll have a look at the stage. I'll just run back the queue there. So this is the previous queue. This is Q13. This time when I hit go and they travel across the stage, they travel in a straight line. And not only are they traveling in a straight line, they're staying overlapped over top of each other. Now that has saved somebody somewhere many, many, many hours of programming. That parameter, um, if, let's have a look at the screen here, the, um, the parameter appears on every moving light that um, has, uh, basically it's a, a function of, a, of the nodding bucket style of moving light. So um, whenever you see that type of light, you will see this parameter appear and uh, you can set it per light, per cue. My advice to you, if you had moving lights and you were planning on plotting your show, is in your very first queue of your show, you'd grab all of your moving lights, set them all to linear movement like that, and record that as Q1. And that way it will be in linear movement for the rest of your show and you don't have to think about it again. 